Welcome back to the Tech Coach Corner YouTube series presented by Dino. I'm Tiara Lustig, Marketing Manager here at Dino, and I am your host of the show. Today, we have a great conversation with Holly Clark back on the show, and she is sharing some great tips on assessment for students and how assessment has really transformed throughout the past year or two, especially with the onset of remote learning. Holly's a super engaging guest, so I am looking forward to this episode. Before we jump in, just want to remind everyone to subscribe to Dino's YouTube channel. Go ahead and follow us on all of our other social media channels. We're on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, as you're seeing, and LinkedIn. Um, so we'd love to engage with you on there and have you give us a follow. We also will be hosting our EdTech Roundtable event coming up on Friday, February 19th from noon to 1 p.m. Eastern time. This is a free digital event and we're gonna have a great conversation with some panelists on what ed tech tools they're using for student engagement and some tactics that can support these tools um, in helping them increase student engagement in the classroom, whether you're remote or in person. Great event, like I said, go ahead and register on our website. The link is below in the video description. Without further ado, let's jump into our conversation with Holly. Welcome back to Tech Coach Corner, everyone. I'm Tiara Lustig, your host, and today I'm joined by Holly Clark. Holly, would you mind giving a brief introduction to yourself before we get started? So I'm a 20 plus year educator and author of three books and blogger, speaker, all kinds of fun things in the ed world. Wonderful. Well, we're happy to have you here today. I know we've talked with you before about um, some of the books that you've written as well as on our Tackling Tech podcast. Um, one of the things that you talked about on the Tackling Tech podcast is assessment in a digital world and how the onset of technology and technology integration into classrooms has really provoked educators to rethink assessment um, and think outside of the box in, in forms of student assessment. So I'd love if you could talk a little bit about how technology is shaping and changing assessment in the classroom and maybe some strategies that have worked for you and teachers that you work with to rethink assessment. So right now, a lot of teachers are asking, how do I get kids to not cheat on an exam? And my first response is, what kind of questions are you asking that they can cheat? Because my kids, when we're doing an exam, they are explaining their thinking to me. I'm grabbing their uh, learning process from the beginning of the unit to the end, and I'm getting little artifacts. And then they're putting those together and putting them in something like a screencastify or a Flipgrid and explaining everything that they learned about that. So they're actually talking and narrating and and telling me about what they learned. There's no one who can cheat on that. There's no older brother who can tell you about that in the back who's giving you answers. And so if we rethink that um, assessment does not have to be this uh, regurgitation of content, that it needs to be really the application and showing how you learned that. And I learned this first time when I was in New Zealand and these kids were um, sitting in a panel and telling their teachers exactly what they had learned this year. And they chose their standards that they wanted to learn in this grade. And then at the end of the year, they went and proved that they had learned it. And I was like, that is the best thing I've ever seen. And I had been doing that with my students, but I don't have the freedom to do something quite like that. I, I teach in the US. But, but I'm applying that to what kids are doing in terms of, um, of telling me about their learning. So a couple things. I like to use the term press record. Like whatever my students turn in, I don't care if it's a worksheet. My kids aren't doing worksheets, but let's say that they are. I would want them to go onto Flipgrid, put the, put the worksheet on screen and explain to me what happened when they learned that. Or take one of those math problems and do it and narrate the process of their, what they're thinking as they solve that problem and turn that into me so I can hear that mental process that's going on. Not just look at the steps that were provided because that can be done by the older brother. So it's this press record that really helps us rethink digital um, assessments. And also the idea that is really important, and this not doesn't come from me, it just comes from all the reading that I do. Um, we have to have a transfer of knowledge. And transfer of knowledge means that when I learn something, and I'm going to use a fourth grade unit in California, they learn about California history and they learn about the, uh, the 21 California missions, which were put in California to colonize California from the Spanish or, um, or 
with the Spanish were colonizing. And so uh, a transfer of knowledge would be taking the information you learned about that colonization of California and applying it, transferring it to a new and novel situation. And when you can do that, you have a full cycle of learning. And often we don't do that in class. So what that might look like is going on a Flipgrid. I'm going to say Flipgrid again. I should have stock in Flipgrid, but I just love it. Um, going to Flipgrid and giving advice to people who might colonize Mars. Based on what we know about the colonization of California, here's what you don't want to do. Here's what you do want to do. And so I'm getting to see that they learned that information. And there's the transfer of knowledge and the deep critical thinking from taking from colonization of California in the 17 and 1800s to Mars in 2024 or whatever it might be. Um, so that's the kind of digital assessment, the application, the transfer um, that we need to be thinking about now. And it's hard because we all learn taking multiple choice tests. And so we think that's the way we show our knowledge. And it never was. It was just all we could do without technology. Now we have technology and we can do better. So that's like an example of how it can look now. That's a great example. And I think when you mentioned um, hearing a student's thought process as they're doing work, I remember when I was in school, I was always told to show my work and show my thought process. But I think hearing it and seeing it as the student is doing that is so much more impactful. Um, and without technology, we wouldn't be able to do that. So um, I think those are some great tips. Hopefully people can start to rethink assessment in their own schools and classrooms. Um, Holly, where can people find you if they would like to engage with you or learn from you first? Further. Well, first place is my blog at hollyclark.org. I have a Facebook group um, and that's an infused classroom. We do a lot of stuff there. So those are two great places to start any social media outlet, Instagram, uh, whatever it is. I'm at hollyclark.edu, even TikTok. <laughs> and so um, those are great places to start. Perfect. We'll link all of that below so that people can engage with you. And thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you for having me.